This is an introduction and a review of labelling right angled triangles and the trigonometric ratios for right angled trigonometry. When we label a right angled triangle for trigonometry, we're labelling it compared to where a particular angle that we care about is. We'll often use this sign for the angle, like a circle with a line through it, this symbol's name is theta, and it just means the angle. Now, we can already label the hypotenuse because that is always the longest side opposite the right angle. But we do need to also be able to label the shorter sides. Opposite the angle that is marked or the angle that we care about, so opposite it, not touching it, is the opposite side. And next to the angle that we care about, but not the hypotenuse obviously, is the adjacent side. So the two short sides are opposite and adjacent. The long side is hypotenuse. So for this triangle, 5 is our hypotenuse, 3 is our opposite, 4 is our adjacent. Adjacent just means next to something. Please note that if the angle that we cared about was the other angle, it's never the right angle, it's always one of these two. So if I change this triangle only by changing what the angle was that we cared about, then the hypotenuse is still the same, it's the longest side, it's opposite the right angle, but now 4 is the opposite, and 3 is the adjacent. So it very much depends on where the angle is that matters. And the angle will be marked either by theta or by having its size given. So you can label a triangle. The trig ratios are just a comparison of sides within the angle. So opposite and hypotenuse are related in a ratio or a fraction of 3 to 5, 3 over 5. Remember that similar triangles have sides in matching ratios and we're using that for trigonometry. There's three possible pairs we could have, opposite and hypotenuse, hypotenuse and adjacent, or opposite and adjacent. And the trig ratios are just saying these are these three pairs of sides that we might use. They're called sine, the first one, abbreviated to sine, S-I-N, and we always say sine of the angle, sine theta, because it's the opposite of that angle over the hypotenuse. And this is just saying when we've got the opposite and the hypotenuse involved, that relationship will just call it sine. Cosine is the next one, abbreviated cos. Cos of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent ratio, tan of the angle is opposite over adjacent. So it's just the three possible pairs of sides that we could have, and each one gets its own little name. When you write the ratios, you must write sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, or at the very least O over H. You must have sine theta. Now if they ask you to write the ratios for this triangle, so if that was our question, write sine, cos and tan of the angle for this triangle, you would write the ratio as given here. So these are our big important ratios which we absolutely must know. To write sine theta for this triangle, we'd write sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, and then substitute in, we don't know the angle, so we leave it as theta, opposite is 3, hypotenuse is 5. Cos of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so cos of the angle here is 4 over 5. Tan of the angle is opposite over adjacent, so tan here is 3 over 4. So if you're asked just to write the ratios, this is what you do. You give this as the ratio written in its full form, substitute in the values, 
And if you had been asked to write it as a decimal instead of a fraction, which is up to the question, then you would just evaluate it. So 3 divided by 5, sine of the angle is 0 0.6. and you'd use your calculator if you needed to. But the question might ask for fraction form for the ratio, it might ask for decimal form. So that's just a very simple type of question that we might get very early on in trigonometry. Most of it is, this is just the basic tools for using trig. We'll get to problem solving later.